am so sad. Today is the end of an era. I am taking down my book stacks. They've gone through a lot. They've seen a lot. I'm surprised being the clumsy individual that I am that they're all in pristine condition still. <laughs> but essentially I've accumulated, I don't even want to say way too many books because you can never have too many books but too many for my room. So I convinced my parents to let me turn one of our spare bedrooms into a library. So I'm super excited. <laughs> but it's bittersweet because my books bring so much character to my room. I've got my bookshelf, I've got book stacks that are still gonna stay in my room, everything on my record player is still gonna stay, my bookshelf is still staying set up, my book stacks, on my jewelry box, and then on my cubby are still gonna be in my room. I thought about doing shelves above my bed. I just thought it would look too cluttered. I also was definitely worried they were gonna collapse on me and I was gonna die. So you win some, you lose some. As you can see, didn't know I was hiding that, huh? I'm gonna be filming a TikTok of me taking down the stacks and rearranging them, at least for now. So it may be a little misleading because starting out, I'm just taking all of the hard covers out of my room. All of my paperbacks are still gonna stay in here for the time being at least until we buy the bookshelves. But I am currently starting this video on April, April 22nd. Hopefully within the next week, I'll be able to get everything together. So I'm gonna take you on this journey with me. <laughs>
got some bookshelves. I am losing my mind over this. It's been a long time coming. Okay. <laughs> we are all well aware that I've got stacks upon stacks of books on my floor. Being as I live in Florida and we're currently in hurricane season, it's just not sustainable, especially since my bedroom is most susceptible to water. But as you are probably well aware, bookshelves are so expensive. So after about a year and a half, my books are finally going on bookshelves. I've got no idea what the plan of attack is. My book stacks are currently organized by color, but I definitely don't want to do a colored bookshelf. It's just not for me. I just like the aesthetic of it when they were on my floor. So I definitely am going to organize it by author, but I also think I'm going to organize it by genre. I'm only unsure about the shelf setup in the sense that I've got probably an equal amount of hardback and paperback. I used to be a hardback girly. Okay, I'm speaking my truth, but now I only buy hardback if it's a series. So I think I'm either going to do one shelf as all hardbacks and the other as all paperbacks, still organized by genre and author. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just posted a video on my Instagram story, just the layout of the bookshelves and everybody is so excited and it's making me excited. <laughs> I am just so excited to share this experience with you because a lot of you have just been waiting for me to get bookshelves. I've got three normal size shelves and one narrow shelf. So I've got a couple PR boxes that I've kept. They're currently under my bed. I thought I was going to put them on the narrow shelves, but everyone's checking me out. I think I'm only going to use three fourths of the shelf space, but everyone in my family thinks I'm going to use all of it. They think it's going to be barely enough. So comment down below how many shelves you think I'm going to fill. So I was going to go with the Billy bookcases, but I do still live with my parents. So just looking toward the future, when I do decide to move out on my own, these actually match the bookcase that is in my room. So to start, I think I'm definitely going to bring all my books in here. They are everywhere. I've got two bins about this long with hardback books in our spare bedroom and then I've got all of the books on my floor. I'm not sure what books I want to take out of my room, if any. I've got my bookshelf, then I've got my Krista and Becca Ritchie shrine. I want to keep the Addicted and Callaway Sister series in my room so bad, but I own at least five copies of each book, so <laughs> my collection is only growing. It's not stopping anytime soon. I've also got my cubby that's got a lot of my signed and out of print editions. So I love the way the color palette looks in my room, but I'm leaning toward making that my priority TBR shelf. Originally, I was also going to separate all of the books that I've been sent from the rest of my collection. I'm still unsure if I'm going to do that. I may just make a separate shelf on my Libid. I made a video of me cataloging almost all of my books a couple of weeks ago. Libib is the app I was using to do that. Since you can create multiple shelves, I think I may just make one titled Gifted. But once all the books are on the shelf, then I'm going to turn around all of the books that I've already read. I am very blessed to be able to put all of my books on shelves, but I also want to give you a disclaimer that this entire room is not mine. It's our home office and workout space. So since we live in Florida, our garage is too hot to put workout equipment in. Since one of my siblings is obsessed with fitness and working out, I share the room with them. So I would do a home office tour, but it's not very aesthetically pleasing from my outlook. <laughs> but I will say the compromise did work well because I've got one corner of the room and they've got another. So I do think I'll still be able to film in here, but without further ado, let's get started.
Okay, so I've just sorted all of the hardback books. I'm still not sure the way I'm gonna set this up. So I'm thinking one of the bookshelves in the far corner is going to be all hardback, but I was going to put the sprayed and special editions on the narrow shelf, but I think I'm actually just going to put them on top of the hardback shelf. I'm still debating on what I want this narrow shelf to be, so thus far, I originally thought it was going to be PR boxes. Then I decided I wanted to do the sprayed edge and special editions on it. Then I decided I wanted to do an author spotlight because I've got a lot of duplicate copies of books by authors I absolutely love. So Chris M. Ritchie, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Emily Henry. I think that's what that shelf is gonna be. But I've got an entire bin of book of the month books. Truthfully, I don't think I'm going to keep them. I may still put them on the shelves, at least until I sell them, but I think I'm only going to keep copies of the books that I've already read and absolutely love. But it's also difficult because I don't want to buy these again as paperbacks. So that's why I think I'm just gonna keep them on my shelf for now. But the only time I think I'm going to put the hardback and paperback books together is when I do an author spotlight. It's so bittersweet.
So this top shelf is for box sets. I'm still unsure on whether I want to keep the books in the boxes. So this shelf is mostly fantasy, but I've also got some dystopian and sci-fi novels interspersed. Once again, I wanted to save some space for when I do inevitably get more books. So I decided to display Fourth Wing. I've seen a lot of people display their books on the outside like that. Truthfully, I didn't think it was going to be for me, but I'm actually low-key obsessed with it now, so look what you made me do. So this shelf is definitely temporary, but I decided to display some of my special editions purely because I know I'll be getting the Illumicrate Bridgerton set for Christmas, so I'm definitely planning on displaying that on this shelf. I'm very excited. Mostly because it's going to be the break between most of my fantasy novels with the darker covers as opposed to all of the rest of my novels that are much brighter when it comes to the color scheme. So I'm definitely very excited to see that displayed. Then we've got this beautiful lovely shelf that is all of the rest of my hardbacks. I did decide to color coordinate just this shelf because while I wasn't wanting to color coordinate my entire library, I didn't mind just a shelf or two being color coordinated. That brings me to... So these are all of my book of the month books. I also color coordinated these. Truthfully, I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna keep them purely because I am a paperback girly now. When I started my book of the month subscription, I was hardback. 
without a doubt. I wanted hard back in everything just because I thought it was more durable. While that is true, it is definitely not sustainable when you're annotating your books like I do, but until I decide they are on the shelf. Then we've got this shelf. Actually, we're not gonna talk about this side of the shelf, but we will talk about this side. So I don't have very many young adult books, but the ones I do have are in this corner. I was pleasantly surprised that they all fit. You can see that I also started turning around some of the books that I had read. I am still undecided on whether or not I want to do that. I probably will, but since everybody wants an in-depth book tour, I probably won't turn all of my books around until then. So this shelf is where the rom-coms end, but the angstier romances reside. I've got quite literally no space to add any more books to the shelf. As you can tell, I am still undecided on turning the books around. I definitely kept the Christina Lauren books that I'd already read turned around just because their books don't follow a specific color scheme. So whereas my Emily Henry books look like they belong next to each other, the Christina Lauren books don't look as cohesive. Then we've got these three shelves that are my rom-com shelves. I put mostly book talk books on this top shelf. So we've got my Emily Henry collection, then Allie Hazelwood, then Elena Armaz. Truthfully, I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna keep those books. I absolutely despise the Spanish love deception, so I can't see myself enjoying the American roommate experiment, especially given the reviews that I've read. But then we've got some Rachel Lynn Solomon, then we've got my Tessa Bailey Shrine. Would you believe me if I told you those are not all of my copies of Unfortunately Yours? I still own another one. But then I got this book yesterday, but I was definitely panicking because at the point that I got it, my entire rom-com section was full. There was no space. So I actually have my Tessa Bailey book spread out between this stack and next to it, but I ended up just putting it all in one stack. Then I have this tradition that whenever I get a PR box, I put some of the confetti that goes in the box in one of these bottles I got from Michaels. I actually bought these to make Harry Potter potions and that definitely did not work out. So I think this was an adorable alternative. So it's definitely sentimental, but it also worked as a bookend. So it's a win-win situation. There wasn't exactly a rhyme or reason to literally anything on either of these shelves. Most of these two shelves were books that were sent to me. Then we've got these two shelves. These are mostly indie authors. They aren't necessarily rom-coms but maybe novels with a lot of banter. Once again they are romance shelves though. I've clearly got a type. Then we've got some more indie authors. I've got some Devney Perry on the side. Then I had the Me Before You trilogy and the Magnolia Park series next to each other and I absolutely love the way the color scheme looked. They're just too perfect to not put together. Then we've got some Mariana Zapata next to the Raven Hood trilogy. Once again, the color palette just absolutely ate. Then the shelf is pretty simple. I've got my women's fiction next to my contemporary fiction. Then the shelf is shelfing. Truthfully, it's all over the place. I've got some thrillers and mysteries here, then some nonfiction, then some dark romance, so to speak. There are like three romances in that corner that are definitely not dark romance, but we're just gonna roll with it. Then I absolutely love these two shelves because they are most of my special edition books with sprayed edges. The top is mostly books from the Fairy Loot Young Adult subscription box, so most of them are fantasy, but then this shelf are mostly books from the Afterlight Illumicrate subscription box, so they're mostly romance. Then I've got this special edition of Bridgerton. She's just there, she's just vibing. I do still have most of my books from the Afterlight box in my room, but these are most of the ones that didn't go with my aesthetics, so. <laughs> then we've got my Taylor Jenkins Reid shelf. As I told you earlier, I was thinking about making this an author spotlight shelf, so I decided to try that out with Taylor Jenkins Reid purely because I've got so many copies of all of her books. She is one of my Holy Trinity authors. Then I've got this gorgeous fairy loot exclusive of the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo displayed. It is one of my most prized possessions. Then I've got some Waterstones exclusives interspersed with the Book of the Month copies of some of her books. Then we've got my beautiful Harper Muse Classics. This is the Jane Austen collection. They actually sent these to me and I was absolutely gagged, let me tell you. I've never been sent prettier books before this. Then. Bum, bum, bum. We've got the last shelf. She is the junk drawer of shelves. She's all over the place. They are just miscellaneous books with nowhere to go. Quite literally almost every genre is on the shelf, but my romance arcs with the white spines just didn't look cohesive on the rest of the shelf. All of the other books, there just was no more room on the shelves they were supposed to go on. 